I'm so excited to see you for graduation. Uh, this is like every single thing in our lives at first. So we're sort of today graduating two classes, so I'm really excited to welcome all of you. Um, so I'll say that quickly. I'm going to start actually with thank yous, if that's okay. Um, kind of the, the flip of what we typically do for our graduation, but um, I do want to say again, welcome to our friends, to our colleagues, to our colleagues, to alumni who are here, and also um, to those who are online virtually with us. We um, they are webcasting, so you won't see their friendly faces or chat, um, but they're actually on the web and able to um, to stream this live. And so, welcome to all of you who are watching from home as well. Um, it's exciting to know that we can share graduation beyond just this room, so I'm grateful to declare that we were able to make all this work. I want to start with thank yous, like I said, I'm so full of gratitude today. Um, I want to start by thanking our executive coaching team. Um, usually you guys know I kind of end with them because it's they're such a key part, but I really want to start with them because I think this year more than ever, our coaches have meant so much to this class. Um, so I'll call them out um, because we have a couple of new folks, um, one of whom is with us this year, or today, sorry, uh, John Phelps. Um, thank you, John, for your work this year. Uh, Tim Madrigal, who works here with us. Jenny Kale, who worked with some of you. Colonel John Boggs, who's been with us now a couple of years, is amazing. Uh, Brian Wood. Brian Wood. And Molly Brown, who is our kind of founding um, coach, and I'm just always so grateful for his leadership and his guidance and all of his wisdom. Um, they work harder than you ever would even know to help you address the challenges. Oh, and here's Carol Box, and just said thank you. <laughs> yes. They worked harder than ever to help you address challenges that you might be facing at home and at work in these unprecedented times, and I was so personally grateful this year that we had more time with them, more social time, and finally managed to plan social hours with all of us. Not just uh, virtually, but we finally had the opportunity to do that together in person, which was really quite wonderful. I'm so grateful for their talents and for their generosity, especially this year. Uh, we're really just thank you for your partnership for these many years and also for the three for you this year. I also want to say thank you to the ASU Lone Star team, some of whom are here today, but especially to Jill Watts and to Dr. Robert Ashcraft. <laughs> As you can imagine, this year required so much more intention with planning, with pivoting, execution. I'm so grateful for your leadership and your support on the program days. Thanks to Addie, who's been kind of an invisible hand. Many of you probably don't know. She's oftentimes in the room with us, helping us with technology and all kinds of other items to make your days more smooth, even though technology stands in my way. Um, I'm fortunate to work with each of these people. And this year, we were really called on to work as a team more than ever before. Um, like so many of you, I have spent more time reading and thinking this year about leadership more than ever in the past, at least for me. Um, maybe it's a little bit because I'm home more often, and a little bit it's because I figured out that Audible will let you listen to books at one and a half and double speed, so I'm able to get <laughs> twice as much, which is great for me. Um, and I'm really enjoying it. Um, but I was actually reading through something from, something from a couple of years ago, maybe almost 10 years ago now, um, from Psychology Today that talked about how leaders think differently, right? And so just in thinking about all of you, I want to share a couple of things that this article said. It said that they, leaders do things differently, these three things. They manage pessimistic, pessimistic thinking. Successful leaders can rein in pessimistic thinking in three ways. They focus their time, they focus their energy on what they can control. They know when to move on if something isn't working, and they know if they don't have control of a specific area, right? So leaders also um, know that this too shall pass. And I love this. Successful leaders embrace the suck. And understand that while the ride is bumpy, it doesn't last forever. This too shall pass has always been kind of a mantra for me. And then finally, great leaders are great at compartmentalizing. They don't let adversity in one area of their life seep over into other areas of their life. Each of these concepts, Focus on what you can control, this too shall pass, and compartmentalizing totally went away this year. <laughs> None of that can be happening anymore. You have to embrace the suck, it is a pandemic. It's going to pass, but when? We could have never imagined that 14 months later we would still be living with these kinds of restrictions. And then we have my favorite, compartmentalizing. Most workers work from home, right? You had to live at work. You had to also educate your kids at home, out of your office. And that's also probably where you may have vacationed. The adversity was inside the house because it was the office, too. I really do believe that those leadership qualities are true, but this year has really tested my thinking 
about all of this in ways I never imagined. And it really connected me to this class, class 13 of the American Express Leadership Academy. Last summer, we interviewed so many candidates and selected 33 leaders for the program. It was unique to take on an opportunity, and we really kind of thought about taking this large of a class in a pandemic, but again, without a roadmap, we felt sure that hopefully by September, October, we could all be together. Um, and I have to say, it's such a bold idea that each of you would apply to a program in a pandemic, do virtual interviews, and step forward for a leadership opportunity not knowing what it could look like. And I think we said to each of you, we don't really know what the program days are going to look like. The American Express Foundation has asked us to provide this opportunity virtually, and so we're going to do that, but we know things could change. And each of you took that step and said, I want this for myself, I want this professional development opportunity, and you stepped forward. And then we tested them in every possible way. We asked for your flexibility, we did half days, Josephine took us through a half day virtual that was like a hybrid and we were together and apart. Um, and we shifted program days and we pivoted like we were doing at work. We added days and we continued to change the programming dramatically this year. We asked Karen to do her training around how to manage your emotions earlier in the year because that's where everybody was, right? We asked John to step forward and do relationship mapping because it was so important to us that you knew how to connect to each other and you knew how to build roadmaps to each other. There were so many lessons from this year. Many of our class members were called to be first responders. You became frontline workers. You were working to build a new, a more durable safety net for those who are most vulnerable in our community. And we learned about collaboration and shared outcomes and how we can be successful together. So while we were in a leadership program, one or two days a month, some of your organizations were laying off staff and you were operating in total uncertainty. And then we came together on those Fridays, right? Sometimes in the afternoon, sometimes in the morning, once I think all day. Um, and hopefully that was your day to step back and maybe step up a little bit and have a moment to think outside of the everyday. For those virtual convenings, we had time to share our lessons, our fears, successes, and look ahead to future program days. I want to share with all of you who are not in this year's class that this year's projects were some of the most impressive and educational we have seen in years. And the very good news is we recorded them. <laughs> um, we were talking earlier today about how great last year's were, and there's um, one in particular that I revisited personally a couple of times, and then we learned that they weren't all downloaded. So this year we have saved all of your projects. They were exceptional. While you all worked remotely on a team, your collaborations and final presentations were remarkable. Most importantly, I think that was one of the ways you were all able, I hope, to truly connect to each other, even if it's been mostly over Zoom. The power of talent in this class is impressive, and I look forward to watching you ascend in your careers. One of the things that we learned in this class was the importance, with class 12, I'm sorry, uh, the folks who are here also with us today, was the importance of ASU and the American Express Network. Today, you join that network of alumni from the past 12 years. Many of you continue to grow and lead in our community, and I'll hope that you'll take on the opportunities provided by the American Express Foundation as well, and by the ASU Lone Star Center, and most importantly, by each other, by your alumni network here locally, that will continue to inspire your leadership journey and develop relationships across all their classes. So with that, um, we, so we did something a little bit different this year. Um, as you know, we always have a class speaker, um, and so we wanted um, someone to offer us a little reflection, and the class selected somebody, but we had another um, person who actually is kind of a storyteller, like a really well-known storyteller, and she had a really interesting experience this year. Not only did she change jobs, she moved away, um, and is starting on a whole new um, career idea, career path, and so we wanted her to share some reflections. She wasn't able to be here with us today, so we have a video from her, so with that, we'll watch a video of Rachel Edward. My brother and I moved into our house in 2018, and in quarantine, I've had the chance to see a whole other side of him. I was in the kitchen one day, and I overheard him talking to a customer. Well, I overheard her. She was crying. She was distraught because her car had been wrecked, and he listened to her, and when she had finished, he said, you've been through a lot, and that says a lot. Keep your head up. I was so impressed by his empathy and maturity 
that I tweeted it to share it with you in this moment. I remember when we were together in person for the first time, a hybrid session where some of us were virtual and some of us were together and we were learning about our personalities, our colors, our energetics, and what that says about us and how we move and relate to the world. We had an activity where we were planning our ideal vacation and the structural folks wanted an agenda, they wanted a plan so they would know how to pack. The conceptual folks were more loose and free flowing. They would see a restaurant full of people and say, hey, let's go there, that looks good. And conceptual folks, well, that's not on the agenda or structural folks would say, and the structural folks would say, well, that's not on the agenda. At work, I'm a structural person. I need to know what's on the agenda so I can plan and be prepared so I would know what to say. But on vacation, I'm very conceptual. I want to just go and see and experience. But how do I marry those two and be conceptual when I'm working and living all in the same space? So I started to go into my backyard and go on adventures and study my trees. And there's one tree in particular that's my favorite. It started off, at least I thought, It was a weed, and my landscaper would just leave it alone. Soon it became just a random bush growing, and I asked him, hey, why don't you cut this down? And he said, oh, that's a mesquite tree. And I said, oh, wow, a free bonus tree that just planted itself next to a brick wall. That's awesome. It grew thorns because it was wild, but it's also the tallest tree. We had four, three other trees planted professionally, But this wild mesquite tree has the largest, strongest branches, and it's already giving shade to both our our house and our neighbors. And I just love to go and study that tree. (laughs) I love to study its leaves, the ants marching along it. One day I was studying it, and I saw a green stick tree bug. And I would have never noticed it if I hadn't just been standing there, just looking at it and admiring it. You know, I was admiring its tenacity, its beauty, its strength. And now here we are in 2021, and it seems like things are opening up. And much like this mesquite tree, we've had the opportunity to redefine who we are as leaders in the midst of a pandemic. We've rooted ourselves and planted ourselves in spaces that weren't always meant for us. And thanks to this program, our roots have been watered and we're flourishing in the desert. So anytime you feel overwhelmed or like you're not enough or like things are too much, remember, you've been through a lot and that says a lot. Keep your head up. Um, uh, so the, unfortunately, thank you to Rachel for putting that together for us. We're so grateful and we wish her so much success in New York and hopefully we'll be seeing lots of her online and eager to see where she goes next. Um, Dr. Ashcraft, the executive director for the ASU Lone Star Center, you remember has joined our class a couple of times this year, wasn't able to be with us today, but he also has a message for us. So we'll uh, hear from Dr. Ashcraft next. Welcome to the 13th class celebration and reception of the American Express Leadership Academy at the ASU Lone Star Center for Philanthropy and Nonprofit Innovation. Dr. Robert Ashcroft here, uh, my privilege, pleasure to welcome you uh, to this occasion. Whether you're attending in person or by virtual means, we're just delighted that you're here to celebrate such a, a wonderful event. On this occasion, uh, we certainly celebrate the participants of this year's uh, class and then indeed the entire class 13. Uh, What a remarkable year with a remarkable academy. We also want to acknowledge uh, the prior classes uh, that comprise now a robust network of alumni of our academies over the years. And it's remarkable to see uh, not only the accomplishments of each of our alumni, but also the impact they're making 
improving the quality of life uh, in our communities. In our experience, uh, which is now more, well more than a decade long, organizing, implementing our academy each year, we've learned a number of lessons uh, about leadership, and dare I call these truths <laughs> about leadership. Such lessons can best be expressed uh, by an essay, very thoughtful essay written a number of years ago by Mills Parker, a multi New York Times, uh, Wall Street Journal best selling author, ghostwriter, and editor. And in the essay, Parker describes his role as an editor. And in doing so, it reminds me very much of the role of our staff and faculty team at the ASU Lone Star Center in shaping an academy experience that brings out the unique leader in each of you. Parker writes, and I quote, I edit books for a living. Actually, that's not true. <laughs> I edit manuscripts. And when I'm done and they are formatted, then they are books. Before they get to me, most manuscripts are essentially a collection of strong ideas and great stories that have been suffocated <clears throat> by authorial self-doubt, insecurity, and bias. So my job as editor is to clear all of that away and expose the greater truths that sit at the core of these stories. I shape the words around them and mold them, created by their intent, so that the ideas may come to life very much like a sculptor's, an artist in an artisan's body, chipping away at the rock diligently, purposefully, until the image reveals itself. He goes on to note <clears throat> that Michelangelo, perhaps history's greatest sculpture, understood this concept to his bones. And he attributes two famous quotes to Michelangelo that speak directly to this uh, issue. The first, and I quote, uh, every block of stone has a statue inside it, and it is the task of the sculptor to discover it. And, I quote, I saw the angel in the marble and carved until I set him free. As you reflect on this year of learning, of discovery, of self-transformation, consider not only what knowledge and tools were added to your leadership toolkit, and there were many, I know, but consider equally what was chipped away, what was removed from your leadership stance as a result of your academy experience. Perhaps it's about removing the shackles of self-doubt or uh, confirmation bias that seeks only sources of information that affirms your existing beliefs. Or perhaps it's about abandoning long-held beliefs altogether that don't stand up against factual empirical evidence. Take this permission given to you to consider what you deleted from your leadership stance, as much as what additions you gained this year through the insights revealed by the content and programming introduced to you by the editors of the ASU Lodestar Center. This year's experience hasn't magically turned you into a leader that wasn't actually already inside of you. So rather, perhaps the true impact of this year's Academy is realizing that you began as a one-of-a-kind piece of marble and the year helped to carve your unique stone until setting you free as the leader that has been within you all along. Congratulations and all the best wishes to you in the now and the next of your leadership journey. Be well. I have not seen that yet. Um, I love that uh, idea of the Michelangelo, that things get chipped away. Um, what a great analogy for the share. Um, so it's my pleasure to introduce to you again, um, Cheryl Ruggiero. She's the Director of Charitable Giving for the Thunderbirds, and more importantly, our very big boss. She's the Chair of the ASU Lone Star Center Leadership Council. Just a moment of personal privilege. This was the first year we've been able to have Cheryl back um, with our class, with Class 13. Um, one of the gifts of uh, Zoom has been that we can have access for an hour or two to people who typically we wouldn't be able to have in our program days. And so we were so honored, so delighted to have Cheryl join us for one of the panels this year. So Cheryl, welcome back to the Class 13. Um, 
forgive me for running in late, but don't worry about um, Because her other hat is the Boys and Girls Club, that's right. And I had to wait for a three-year-old child. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Many of you I know, and um, many of you I'll get to know. And, and the one thing you're going to find out about me is I have no filter on my mouth, so whatever flows out, flows out. But uh, the Thunderbirds, uh, if you're not familiar with us, we are a philanthropic organization here in the Valley. We started in the early 30s as a special event arm of the Phoenix Chamber of Commerce. And um, back then, the the committee, the Thunderbird committee then thought, how can we promote the Valley of the Sun? Well, I think we should have a golf tournament. So that's what they started. Fast forward to 2021. Oh my gosh, I almost said 2022. But um, 2021, and that was our, uh, we were grateful that we were able to pull off the event, and it was our 86th tournament. So we've been around for a long time. Um, the 86th tournament, we're, we're the fifth oldest tournament on the tour. Um, all of our charitable giving is driven from that tournament. So the last 12 months, um, we went through everything that you all have been experiencing. And I have to tell you that um, we couldn't have done it without all of us doing it together in the story. Um, Rachel had some wonderful thoughts, and, and Dr. Ashcraft always has deep thoughts. But what I want to say, it, it's really quick because I know we want to get to the reception, but um, telemedicine is the bomb. I'm not saying that. Um, technology is wonderful. It's been very convenient and opens lots of doors that wouldn't have been, uh, we wouldn't have been able to connect with people. But you cannot, you cannot you just can't get away from human touch and um, connecting one-on-one -on -one with people in person. And this week, I've been on so many site visits to my charities that we have supported this year. And just to see them, they were, it was fabulous. And I, uh, I can't, I just really can't say enough about one-on-one. Um, -on -one. But the, the final, final thing I wanted to say is, we have gotten stronger this last year. We've gotten more resilient individually and collectively we've done that so remember that self-care is not a self-indulgence remember to take care of yourself because there's a lot going on but we're all strong together so one more question um phoenix open my question is just raise your hand if you've never been to the phoenix open raise them high okay oh my god i got a lot of to do in this room. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm here before you to tell you it's an event that you have you just must come out and see. And um, my contact information is crgero at wmphoenixopen.com. Cassidy, Jill have it. Send me a message in January. Cheryl, I'd like to come out. Fine, I'll put tickets at roll call for you. You cannot understand that community event until you come out there. So please, please, we need y'all. Thank you. So there's almost no one I can think of who's more generous with her time than Cheryl Rogero. She's one of the busiest people you'll ever know. And you have to think about, she runs what is essentially the Super Bowl every year, right? It is literally the Super Bowl. Oh, and we have Super Bowl 23 coming in February. Look, I knew a sports thing. Um, <laughs> that's exactly how much sports I know. Um, but I would say, like, so she runs what is essentially a Super Bowl every year. And then that money comes back into our organizations. So it's a huge deal. And so when we talked about what that would mean to not have Super Bowl this year, Cheryl's first thought was, we have to show the world that this can continue to happen. We have to show the world that the Valley can still be a destination. She never even for a minute thought about, you know, oh, it's too hard or we can't do it, or she knows the power of what they do, but more importantly, she knows that that economic driver also drives dollars back into the nonprofit community. So we are just beyond grateful for you because that was brave and hard and 
It was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. So thank you, Cheryl, for all you do. So every year we also have the privilege of hearing from one of your class members, um, and we ask all of you to let us know who you'd like to hear from. And so we had some great nominations. We also asked our coaches if they had somebody who they really thought was a standout and really accomplished something exceptional. And so this year your class speaker is Ray Young from Tarot's Help. <laughs> First off, congrats to class 13. Congrats to class 12. I know you guys didn't uh, get an in-person graduation last year. Um, thank you to American Express Leadership Academy, ASU Lone Star. It's been an incredible year, an up and down year. Um, my emotions are all over the place today. So, and Randy, I know you're online. I'm not pregnant either, but my emotions <laughs> are <laughs> all over as I Sam recap the year. Um, I started writing a bunch of stuff on what I was going to say, and then it hit me that I'm not analytical. I'm social, um, you know, and so I'm just going to speak from the heart and, and share some of the stuff that I experienced. So first off, to Jill and Cassidy, you guys come up here just real quick. I just want, I want you guys to take just about the class and what you guys have accomplished this year. <laughs> These two days are catapulted into the hybrid world of in person, online, all over the place, dogs barking, cats meowing. Remember that? Um, family in the background, emergencies going on at work, uh, y'all famous, we can't hear you, technology problems. And they handle it with such grace and such dignity and poise and always made us feel welcome. And so thank you guys for everything you did this year and continue to do. Um, I'll share with you guys, it was in 2019, and I was in an event uh, here in Phoenix at a one-day conference, and my boss was there, who I'll introduce here in a little bit, um, was there with us, and I was with coworkers, and we were sitting, we were having breakfast, and all of a sudden, my boss's team from class 12 shows up to this event, and they overtake the team, right? And in a positive way, their energy was just, I remember leaving, and we were having breakfast before the event, and I remember leaving, going into the big room, going, God, I'm going to be part of that. That was absolutely amazing. It was just an infusion of energy, of positivity. Little did I know that a year later, I would be asked by my boss to play. And so, Jenny and I, my boss, you stand up. Class 12. <laughs> And to the other family and just coworkers that are here, Chile, or Jose, I see your family here. So I see several people, folks walking in with family. Thank you guys. To coworkers, to family that have supported us, that continue to support us, that allow us the opportunities to do so. You know, from the bottom of my heart. Um, so anyway, so we we apply. And I was sharing with the team earlier. You know, the interview process was online. And I'm sitting there like, what do I wear, what do I not wear? So I put the top half of the suit on and, and gym shorts on the bottom. And I did my interview, as I'm sure a lot of us have been in meetings, right? Yeah. And so, um, so it went, it started. And from that moment on, I just felt at peace because it was just such a peaceful process that you felt at home. We started, the class started, and next thing was the sharing of our stories. And that's, I think, when it really hit home for me. A piece that brings us all together. That everybody in that, in the class, and I'm sure it's been in the classes before and will be in the classes to come, that we're unified with something. We've all been through struggles, the pain, the fear. My fear is speaking, and I'm up here. Um, and it's like we've all taken that and turned it into opportunities. 
you're talking to a kid here who, when I grew up, there was no internet. I, remember, I found an AM radio my dad had in the garage, and the first person I ever listened to was Dolly Parton. And um, I didn't have the opportunities that all of us as a combined group are giving to people today through our nonprofit sectors. And here I found myself with uh, an incredible group of like-minded individuals and with an incredible group of folks who support them who have taken the trials and tribulations and turned them into something. And so I want you guys to just stop and think a little bit for a long time on what that means and how together we're changing lives. Oh, I'm still shaking, I'm sorry. <laughs> In this room, I remember being in the, the Emergenetics and running around the room with the colors and, and having fun and finding out what our color was and what kind of moved us. To the coaches, coaches, fantastic. I have to do a shout out for Brian, who's my <laughs> coach. Uh, it's like I knew him forever and, and uh, just kept going. Just you know, kept uncovering layers, as I'm sure the other coaches did for you guys. Um, As I, was, as I was recapping last night, what I was going to talk about is um, a couple of quotes came to mind. And I'm going to end with this because my mouth is getting really dry. Um, one of the quotes that, that I try to live by is by Dr. Wayne Dyer. If any of you guys are familiar with his work, but it's um, you can't give what you don't have, and you can't give what you don't receive. You can't give what you don't have is actually, I think it's a book, and it's not his quote, but he added on to it was you can't receive what you don't give. Right? And it talks about in a state of uh, giving, that you give to the universe, and the universe gives back. When this year, the universe gave back to me by allowing me to be here, by allowing me to share the past 10, 11, 12 months, I don't know what it's been, um, with all of you. And you guys do that every day. You do it every day in what you do. And the other quote is one by Mother Teresa. And it has nothing to do with religion. It's I believe in her humanity work. That she, she had such a heart for humanity. And her quote was, if you can't feed 100 people, feed just one. And we do that every day. Sometimes it's one. Sometimes it's 100. Sometimes it's thousands at a time. But we do it through our work. As I was walking up here, I was looking here. It says, be the future of our sector. So never forget the collective power we have as collaborators, as friends. I said the friendships that have formed are incredible. Um, so with that, I just, I, I end in, in saying thank you. I'm honored. I'm, I'm just beyond, beyond thrilled to, to have been a part of this and to continue on with this. Thank you. the moment you've all been waiting for. We're finally getting to our graduates. And as Cassie said, we're thrilled to be able to recognize both class 13 and class 12. We're going to go ahead and start with our class 13. And we didn't quite get time for uh, a rehearsal. So for those of you who weren't in the room, you just need to follow the person in front of you. <laughs> These are great life lessons. And so we will begin with the person I'm sure has had to go first for most of her life. So we'll start with Erin Abney. <laughs> and stop with camera. Thank you. <laughs> Christina Brown. Christine Brown, I'm sorry. Christina. <laughs> Kylie Clore. Chilo Figueroa.
Lillian Gilmer. Mary Beth Gregory. Don Hawking. Alexandra Papazian. <laughs> Andrea Teasdale. Morgan Titus. Jose Velasquez. Bray Young. also have people who are joining us online that couldn't be here today. So we want to make sure that we go through and say each of their names. As, as I will set aside so you can see the screen better. Chad Bays. Karen Blackbird. Kira Booth. Cordova, <laughs> Vanessa Carthel, <laughs> Vanessa Cornwall, <laughs> Kate Crowley, <laughs> Ashley Dickerson, <laughs> Rachel Egboro. Julie Ford, <laughs> Nellie Getz, <laughs> Lori Halloran, <laughs> Katia Jones, <laughs> Laura Mo, <Lamote>, Randy O'Connor. <laughs> Eric Ortega, Jackie Phillips, Kathy Pondy, Tamara Wright, let's have a round of applause for Pastor this opportunity of graduation to come together as friends and colleagues and celebrate the completion of the Leadership Academy. For me, it's always really bittersweet because it's the end of something so important, but also the start of your journey as an alumnus, right, or alumni from the program. 
14 months ago, we were just talking about this in the back, Class 12 had their final program day in person on that actual day of March 13th. So many of you guys remember, as we um, were having our day at the Flynn Foundation, things started to close down, and by like noon, half of the class was outside the room taking calls, trying to figure out how we were going to start to handle feeding people, caring for people remotely, will people come back to work on Monday? It was really scary and um, kind of awe-inspiring to see the level of talent that was in the room, many of you decision makers, about what was going to happen in classrooms, in clubs, in hospitals, in healthcare settings. And so we realized really quickly with our class 12 members that they sat in very serious leadership positions and were called on to respond quickly to that pandemic. I will say it was also our very longest happy hour. <laughs> Little did we know it would be the very last day for almost a year um, that we would be able to do that together. We quickly knew that we would have to pivot for the program, and we were fortunate that we had already had the opportunity to develop strong bonds over those first early months. I was so grateful for the friendships personally and the bonds that that class had, especially poignant because I think when we experience something together so dramatic, so catastrophic and life-changing, that it put a new uh, lens on everything. We were suddenly forced into a virtual program day, and we were doing the full long program day, so that imagine like nine or 10 hours together on Zoom. But we got to see everybody's poorly-ish put together uh, home offices. <laughs> Many people were still in a bedroom. Um, in those very early days, we got to meet their kids, and we got to meet their dogs and their spouses. We got to see backyards, and we even got to see a magic show. I was honored and excited to see how important the friendships and the professional relationships were that you had developed through the pandemic. You were calling each other for crisis communications plans. I was one of those people. You collaborated on programs. You shared ideas on how to do more with remote work. And most importantly, you supported each other. As friends, when the uncertainty and fear of COVID's deadly impacts were almost impossible to imagine. We didn't have the opportunity to celebrate graduation from class 12. We did it virtually, again, the longest happy hour, <laughs> the second longest happy hour. Um, I finally had to shut down the graduation at the end of the evening because I had to go to dinner. It was like 7 o'clock at night. But because you guys were wonderful and so many of our alumni were so awed by you and what you had accomplished, they all stayed on and said, welcome, you are who we want to hang out with for sure. And so know that that is part of the group that you are now all joining. I'm so eager for you. Um, to spend time with them as alumni in the future. And so with that, Jill's going to introduce uh, those of us who are uh, in class 12 here tonight. Thank you. And I was trying to look around the room and see who RCP'd and who actually made it. I'm afraid we might be missing a few. But uh, is Suzanne here? I don't think I saw her. OK, so let's get Suzanne. Uh, is Tanya here? Oh, she is Tanya. Contenti Cuomo. <laughs> Kelly Fitzsimmons. <laughs> Nina Freelander. Rochelle Henderson. <laughs> Had a spotlight here? I don't think I saw her. I think so. Jennifer and I. Valerie Pearson. Lisa Potter.
Tablet Powers. David Reno. Allison Smith. And you'll see the rest of the names up on the screen of those folks who weren't able to make it, but let's give them a big round of applause. closing our ceremony. Thank you all so much for being here this afternoon. I hope you'll stay and enjoy Social Hour for with us for a little bit. So happy to see all of you guys together. Um, and please just stay and enjoy and congratulations again to all of you and thank you so much for this year and for last year. We're so grateful and I'll look forward to seeing you all in the interviews coming up. So thanks.